Hello dear children, welcome back. I am Dr. Jisha Jo. In this session, we shall study about reflex actions. And before moving on to reflex actions, let us have a look at what is the difference between voluntary and involuntary actions. What are voluntary actions? Voluntary actions are actions which are under our control. It is we who decide whether we have to do a particular action or not. For example, picking up a book and reading it. It is because of a willing thought I am able to pick the book and read it. It is under my control. Whereas the second type of action is involuntary action. Involuntary actions are actions which are not under our control. There are several examples of uh, involuntary actions. Uh, for example, the beating of the heart is an involuntary action. Peristaltic movement of food through the uh, elementary canal, through the esophagus is an involuntary action. Uh, other examples, for example, uh, the withdrawal of a hand while it touches a hot iron or flushing of tears from the eye when something uh, falls into the eye. See, all these are uh, involuntary actions. We cannot control these actions. These actions are not under our control. But is there any difference between uh, uh, the beating of the heart and the flushing of tears from the eye? These, both these are involuntary actions. But the uh, flushing of tears from the eye comes under a reflex action. So what is a reflex action? Reflex action is a quick or immediate or automatic action or response brought about by the body in response to a particular stimulus. A quick or an automatic uh, response produced in the body as a result of a particular stimulus. Here if you take the example of flushing of tears from the eye, something has fallen into the eye that is the stimulus and as a result of that tears flow out of the eye so that is a reflex action it is a quick it is an automatic action which occurs immediately uh, and it is brought about by a, a particular stimulus the second example which we have taken the removal of hand as when it touches a hot iron here the stimulus is the heat of the iron and a response is the withdrawal of the hand so we can say that all reflexes are involuntary actions but all involuntary actions cannot be termed as reflex actions for example the beating of the heart or the breathing process, peristaltic movement of food, these cannot be considered as reflex actions, but they are involuntary actions. So all reflexes are involuntary actions, but all involuntary actions are not reflexes. I hope you have understood the difference between involuntary action and reflex. So for the exam, you can get a few uh, situations and you might be asked to classify them as uh, voluntary or involuntary actions or reflexes. You might be asked to define a reflex. So reflex is an automatic quick action or involuntary action. It is an involuntary action which is brought about by a particular stimulus. Now, uh, there is uh, a table in the text giving the differences between reflexes and voluntary actions. So, the first one is a reflex is initiated by some stimulus. For example, the heat of the iron has brought about that particular response of withdrawal of the hand from the iron. Whereas, voluntary action is initiated by a willing thought. I need to take the book it is because my I, because I decide I need to take the book and read it. So it is because or it is initiated by a willing thought. The second uh, difference is uh, reflex actions are self-protective mainly. For example, uh, heat of the iron might cause the burning of the hand. 
so it is a self protective mechanism whereas uh, voluntary actions are for the fulfillment of a desired goal i need to read the book that is why i am picking up the book and reading it it is uh, for the fulfillment of a desired goal the third difference is that the command originates mostly in the spinal cord and autonomic nervous system uh, uh in the case of reflex actions whereas in the case of voluntary action the command originates in the brain take the same example okay it is the brain that decides whether i need to walk from here to my table take up the book the muscles of my hands muscles of my legs should work for me to walk from here to the table then i need to take up the book from the table the muscles of my hand should work okay and it is the brain that decides whether to read the book so this uh, the command originates in the brain but in the case of reflex action take the same example of the iron box if you, uh, when when we are touching the iron uh, accidentally iron box accidentally uh, what happens sudden instantaneous withdrawal of the hand is taking place there here in this particular situation it is not the brain that decides whether i have to move my hand away from the iron box away from the heat of the iron the message is being sent to the brain but it is not the brain that decides whether i have to move my hand or no, not so if it was like that um, if uh, the stimulus of heat was received by the uh, skin by my skin and if it was supposed to go to the brain and the brain has to decide whether i have to move my hand from the heat or not by the time my hand would have burned so in reflex actions it is not the brain that decides whether that particular action is to be done or not okay so here the command originates mostly in the spinal cord and in the autonomous sorry autonomic nervous system and in the previous video, video we have studied about the spinal nerve what is uh, or uh, how is the impulse flowing through the spinal nerve we know spinal nerve is a mixed nerve which comprises of both the sensory and mo the motor neuron and just think of that diagram how it is the heat of heat stimulus is perceived by the receptor which is the skin from the skin through the sensory neuron it reaches the, the spinal cord through the dorsal root the sensory neuron reaches the spinal cord Uh, from the spine uh, sorry from the sensory neuron the impulse is passed to the motor neuron through the association neuron and the motor neuron passes out through the ventral root and uh, uh, the impulse is transmitted to the muscles of my hand so that i am able to withdraw my hand from the heat stimulus so here the <coughs> it is the impulse just passes through the spinal cord it does not run up and down the uh, uh, spinal cord it the impulse enters the spinal cord and leaves the spinal cord at the same level in the case of reflexes but it doesn't mean that the brain is not knowing about that action brain is knowing about that action brain is well aware of that action but it is not the brain that decides whether that action needs to be done or not okay so that is uh, the third point that is the command originates mostly in the spinal cord and the autonomic nervous system whereas in the case of uh, voluntary action the commands originate in the brain then coming to the fourth difference uh, reflexes involve muscles and glands whereas uh, voluntary actions involve only muscles glandular actions are also cons are also involved in uh, creating reflex actions glands are also involved in creating for example when there is a decrease in the level or when or the other way around when there is an increase in the level of sugar in the blood what happens immediately insulin is released the information is uh, sent to the brain and insulin is released and uh, this helps in bringing down the glucose level in the blood insulin will be converted to glycogen we have uh, seen about that in the endocrine system so here it is the gland that is working
whereas in the other previous example which we have seen that is the withdrawal of the hand from the uh, heat of the iron that is the muscles of our hands are working whereas in the case of voluntary action voluntary action involves only muscles so i hope you have understood the differences between reflexes and voluntary actions now let us move on to the types of reflexes okay types now there are two types of reflex actions one is the natural reflex and second is the conditioned reflex natural reflex is otherwise called as inborn reflex inborn reflex whereas conditioned reflex is also called as acquired reflex so from the term itself uh, i hope uh, you will be able to understand natural reflex such reflexes are natural they are inborn it is not through previous learning experiences we are learning those reflex actions okay for example uh, the flushing of tears from the eye when something falls into the eye nobody is teaching us that when we are young so it is an inborn reflex it is a natural reflex so such uh, reflex actions or such actions where previous learning experience is not required such actions are called as natural or inborn reflexes a few examples are there in the text please go through all those examples as i told you in the previous uh, um, session uh, means in at the beginning of the video uh, these uh, examples instances might be given and you might be asked to classify them as natural or conditioned reflex okay so natural reflex or inborn reflexes are ones which are not being taught by someone or it is not learned through previous experiences it is inborn it is natural we all have that reflex in us okay whereas conditioned re uh, reflex or as it is also called as acquired reflex it is uh, these reflexes are acquired during our lifetime it is through previous learning experiences that we acquire such reflexes for example uh, the uh, sudden application of the brake when somebody jumps in front of the vehicle it has been through previous learning experiences we acquire that reflex isn't it so that is a conditioned reflex or acquired reflex so with reflexes which uh, have been uh, acquired through previous learning experiences such reflexes are called conditioned reflexes or acquired reflexes uh, another example is tying the shoe lace if a small kid of if a first standard kid or a uh, uh, kindergarten kid is tying his shoelaces how will he tie just think of uh, imagine how a small boy ties his shoelaces he has to look uh, to the shoelaces where and uh, he slowly slowly one by one he puts the uh, lace and ties it he ties a knot whereas in the case of uh, bigger people let's take the example of you people itself Uh, how will you people tie the shoelace you need not have to look at what uh, you are doing there you can talk you can look somewhere and tie the shoelace so it is through pra uh, practice or through previous learning experience that we have acquired that reflex another example when the teacher enters into the class in uh, kindergarten you have been taught that when the teacher enters into the class you have to stand up and wish, wish the teacher isn't it uh, in uh, in kindergarten or in uh, lower classes in uh, especially in the lower kindergarten and uh, upper kindergarten the, as the teacher enters the teacher will say good morning children stand up and wish the teacher and uh, the teachers children will stand up and wish the teacher but when we move on to higher classes the teacher does not come to the class and tell us you children please stand up no as the teacher enters into the class suddenly we will uh, stand up so it is through previous learning experience that we have acquired such a reflex so reflex actions are of two types inborn or natural reflex and the second is conditioned or acquired reflex 
so as we have seen before the pathway of uh, the impulse during a reflex action how is it just think of the pathway from the stimulus is perceived by the receptor from the receptor through the sensory neuron sensory neuron is also called as afferent neuron it reaches the cns the central nervous system that is the brain and the spinal cord in the case of reflex uh, for example the uh, withdrawal of the hand from the heat of the iron it reaches the spinal cord and from the spinal cord the reflex is passed through the motor neuron which is also called as the efferent neuron to the muscles of our hand so this is the pathway of uh, the impulse in uh, a reflex action and it is the shortest route which an impulse takes from the receptor to the effector this is called as the reflex arc so the definition of reflex arc can be asked the pathway of reflex arc can also be asked for the exam so what is a reflex arc the shortest route taken by an impulse from the receptor to the effector what is the pathway of the reflex arc the stimulus is perceived by the uh, receptors then transported the impulse is passed through the sensory neuron to the central nervous system then the impulse passes on into the motor neuron and from the motor or through the motor neuron it reaches the muscles or glands so in the in the example of uh, withdrawal of the hand while touching a hot iron it reaches the muscles of our hand which are the effectors there so this is the pathway of a reflex arc and what is a reflex arc reflex arc is the shortest route taken by an impulse from the receptor to the effector so my dear children hope this session is clear to you if you have any doubts regarding what we have studied in this session please ask your doubts and give your suggestions in the comment section thank you